with the, nope. with the paint yep. brush or because I, I I'm like I'm self taught actually I'm not stick I'm not stuck to one technique you know I'm like uh, have it, it's like riding a gravel bike when you're on the road it goes when you are off road it goes even when you are in a terrain that is way uncomfortable that it's a gravel bike so my brain kind of works like that offered to watch the dog for us while we go to meet up with a good friend of mine Sally who some of you may have seen in a few of the grasshopper adventure series bike race videos that I've made well today we're gonna go down we're gonna meet up with him he's working on some art projects and I thought it would be a lot of fun to go see what he's doing and talk a little bit about art and cycling and how those two subjects sometimes go together really well joining me today who's doing all the navigating on this route to san anselmo is the lovely miss schools and as you can see she's uh, already dropping me here on this first climb we're going up on uh, some back roads just west of Petaluma at the moment. And uh, it's quite a windy day. So how windy is it out here? Uh, it feels like we surprisingly have a wind coming from the south. Yeah. And usually when you ride south, you can bet on getting a tailwind, but so far it hasn't been that way for us. No. And then you were dropping me on the climb back there. I was. Yeah. In Sorry about wind. that. Sorry about that. Well, the wind looks like it's starting to shift. So maybe we'll get a tailwind on the, the end of the ride. Yeah, hope so.
That's quite the collection. <laughs> and even that now, there are, there are a bunch of them upstairs. Some of them look the same too. Exactly. A lot of them look the same. You got a couple of duplicates here, Sally. Exactly. <laughs> Well, they look the same, but for some reason, they're not. But this one, I always consider that to be like uh, the amateur version of my paintings. Mm. Yeah. Really? You consider that amateur? Uh-huh. How come? <laughs> well, it's like the more you grow, the more you become refined. This is like very raw, like somebody trying to be an artist, just painting, and then, you know, anything goes. And I can tell you a lot of things about this painting that will make you go, oh yeah, that's true. If, if you look at the birds, you see uh, uh, some of the steps they're taking are wrong steps, but <laughs> I'm the only one. <laughs> Who noticed? Who noticed? And then I'll give you an example. <laughs> you see, you see how the, 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 leg is bent. Mm. Birds don't bend that, they bend backwards. Oh. <laughs> so that's one of the tricks. But you see when I was doing it, <laughs> <laughs> what can you see, what can you tell about this painting? Can you look at it and tell me something is wrong? This have to have the leather hook on it. Right, there's no hook on But there's leash. no hook on it. So things like that, uh -huh. I intentionally do it. Uh. You know, somebody will look at you and say, eh, no, like, as soon as I, I, I observe that, I leave it that way because it becomes a unique aspect of the painting rather than trying to make everything perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I work with Drawbridge, and Drawbridge uh, then was an art program that support homeless kids. I remember you went and you had your artwork at the Dion Museum yeah. mm -hmm. for a month. For a month, uh, that was 2011, 2000, and, no, 2011, February of 2011, for the month of Black History. Man. So I have uh, a friend called Steve who was uh, interested in making a, a documentary about my artwork and he does that you know and then you know he send them around for you know work and then one day he went to the young museum and then looking for work and then that is like a part of his resume. And as they were looking through it, according to him, they saw me and they, they saw me, the, the, the section of the documentary he did with me and some of the paintings. And then they said, who is that artist? Wait, where is this documentary? Oh, he, he did it actually here. He did? I have a copy upstairs. I'll give you a copy. I before, want a copy. Before you leave, yes. don't forget to No, ask I me. won't. And then they started asking about me, and then he passed the information to me, and I contacted them, and they said, uh, we have a friend, we have this program that we do on Friday night. And normally when we have artists, uh, it's like one, a Friday, uh, like a, a one night show, and then it's a live activity. So if they have an artist, Everything you do is live, and they said, am I interested? <laughs> you do a live presentation? Live painting. Okay. And I said, sure. And then actually the painting, that particular painting is still here. I've, I've, I never finished it. <laughs> and then I went and they gave me this huge haul, and then I'm sitting there and I'm like, uh-oh, this can be good. <laughs> I'm sitting in there like at this humongous hall all by myself. My paintings are set up and nobody's there. So I'm like, oh, at least I'm here. So I started painting and all of a sudden one person shows up, two person shows up, three person shows up. Before I realize I cannot even take a step back. This place was 
hole packed from the room into the hallway all the way out. No it way. Was, yep, it was <laughs> so ridiculous. And then the director said to me that, okay, it seems like uh, the 90s a success, so, <laughs> I guess so why don't you, you know, come and do the residency? And they explained it to me and they said, uh, is that something you would like to do? And I said, why not? And that's how I got, I did the a residency at the Dion Museum. Do you ever have any paintings that you've sold that you wish you still had? Yes, that one. That one? Mm -hmm. Really? That painting, this painting was here today. Probably I will not get less than $50,000 for it. 50000 Five zero. yep. For that painting? For that painting. Oh my God. Sally, and that was that, the one that I, I wanted to buy that one, remember? You see this I came tree. over here and I said... <laughs> I said, don't sell it. I'll buy that one. But I think by then it was gone. You know, these yeah, three paintings, I did this first. No, I did this first. I did that second and I did this third. And when Portal Publication published these three paintings, at that, at that, particular, at the, at that time that I have contract with them, I was selling three posters shy of Van Gogh. Van Gogh was their highest no seller. No way. Yep. Van Gogh was their highest seller, <laughs> and I was what? only three paintings <laughs> behind him. Are you serious? Yep. So tell me the names of these paintings. So this one, you know, the Portal Publication changed the original title to Common Ground. The name of this painting is Last Ride to Eternity. That's the name. That's the that's the original Last title Ride for to Eternity. eternity. And then the 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 the, um, the the company changed it to Common Ground. Okay. What yeah. about the other one? The the other one, uh, I think that they maintained the name for it, you know. But the, yeah, I I don't remember what that name was. And then this one too. You were gonna do a voiceover for a. Like a yeah, I did actually. It uh, so. I had a client living here and then I would take care of their dog uh -huh. and then he's an executive at Pixar. Yeah. So one, one of your clients yep. was an executive at Pixar. Pixar, yep. Okay. So one day they had one of the uh, people at Pixar wants to do like a, a children's, like a, a kind of like children's small short uh, kind of party like uh -huh. documentary or movie whatever it is and then they're looking for somebody to play a Jamaican character and then uh, his partner asked me hey Sally uh, can you speak Jamaican and I said eh, I'm not a Jamaican I'm a <laughs> but I can try and he said uh, oh uh, Kelvin uh, one of Calvin's work at Pixar is looking for somebody to play a Jamaican character. And I said, well, g get me the line and then I will wait. <laughs> <laughs> they got me the line, I work on it, and I went for an audition. I think that was one of my, that was one of the, fu my, my fun time. Uh, or my five seconds of Hollywood experience. So I went to Pixar and then they sent me to their recording studio. Man, this place was like, oh my God. Even oh, first, that's at uh, the same time they, they... It looked almost like the Henry Walberry studio. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You know what the, the we're first, only second the, below Pixar, okay? Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <technical>. <laughs> you know the, the the first time the the car movie, uh -huh. the first series came out. So I went there, and like you know, I, I I was supposed to go and meet the director, and I went there and I'm seeing things, and I'm like, man, I look like out of space. 
as soon as the, 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 the director came out and started talking to me, this kind of like got so simple and easy. Like he said, oh, I learned that you're an artist. And we start talking. And he took me through like how they do all this production from their sketches mm -hmm. to the molding oh. Oh. to the animation to the computerized to the recording. And I'm like, that's so, cool. so he took me like I got we did, one day I went through all the process and things were so much easier. And he said, by the way, if you need anything to eat, this is the cafe, this is this, this is this, just help yourself. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and, and I just got there to meet you and all of a sudden I'm like an executive. <laughs> That was really cool. So I made an appointment with him, and then I went back to the uh, recording studio to to do the voiceover. And then uh, as I'm going through, the process was so much fun. Like I will say my line, he will record that, then I will say it again, and he will record that. I will do it a couple of times, and then it got to a time he said that uh, you want a break, and I said sure, and then. Uh, that we were on break and he came to me and he said, well, normally people would be so excited. You don't seem like nothing faces you. And I said, eh, it is what it is. What can I say? And he said, okay, if I tell you that you are sitting uh, on the same place, Tom Hanks, uh, what is his name? Uh, this crazy guy. Um, uh, he he did the natural libre. Natural libre. Yeah. Jack Black. Jack Black. <laughs> oh my god. And then he's mentioning that he said, <laughs> if I tell you that you're sitting at the same spot, they all sat and recorded uh, a project. Would you be excited? And I'm like, that's so cool. Oh my god. <laughs> Dang. I think it's Rex Party Sorex. Rex Party, Party Sorex. Partysaurus? Like yes. a dinosaur? Partysaurus. Yes. Partysaurus. Yeah. Rex Partysaurus. Yeah. Rex Partysaurus. Yes. Yes. You guys missed it. I was a Partysaurus. Party? You? <laughs> I'll believe it when I see it. Ah, yeah. Partysaurus. We get where you're done for the bath toy. Can you hook us up, man? Duty calls. Oh my God, Sally! It sounds like you could, yeah. at this point in your life, either be you a, a, a right famous now. actor, <laughs> a famous painter. Oh, uh, yeah, you yeah, have yeah, a yeah, choice. Yeah, you were third to Van Gogh. Yeah, that and, that, and that was you know the the thing that surprises me most was the the you know, and then the weird part of it is the reason one of the reason why this company decided to publish my paintings is because they were publishing. Uh, this Jamaican artist and his colors are almost resemblance to my colors and they did well and they figured out that if they did well with him with me you know so I was like a uh, ride right behind Van Gogh during that time selling nice. on, on the set. I'm gonna slide this one I want to see the one behind you. That painting did when, oh, when you said so the one behind it is one of my... Yeah, I've seen that one. Can I slide this over, Sally? Yeah, yeah bring it out. Bring it out? Yeah. Okay, let's do a little art show. Imagine if we had that in our living room. That would be Dude. insane. If you, if you have a thing. space this at your house... This would be worth it more than my house. Uh -huh. If you have a space at your house, that's the thing you should think about it. I you mean... Come and take it any time. The idea came to me the night President Obama was giving up his victory speech in, uh, in, in in Chicago. I mean, so how can I say this painting worth thousand dollar, two thousand? No, you, I can't do that. I, I would rather give it to somebody and know that at least I'm living in that person's life forever than you know. Right. Wow. This really must not. be. What is this one called? Ah, this is uh, one of the series I was working to um, show, like, 
the, the how we all are the same on the planet like for example corn is like a, a tool of life that the language of corn is the same everywhere you go you know corn is like a, a universal I mean, it's like a painting just trying to build cultural bridge how some like I'm a vegan somebody eats meat I don't have a problem with that that's the person's choice but then uh, there's something one thing that you know we can come on you know you go to the grocery store see yeah. fresh corn you pick it up yeah somebody in Malaysia see fresh corn they pick it up and you know so this is amazing so some of the paintings so I don't have the corn yeah some of the wow. paintings I don't have title for but it's like and then a part of this painting is to bridge you know the essence of life like both spiritual uh, really re religious and, and uh, cultural so and uh, my approach on this painting is to like uh, we might our beliefs might probably be you know our approach might probably be different but our beliefs always heads towards the same goal People call it painting, but I call it more of like a, a design work or illustration. Depends on whatever way you go. My paintings are more of an illustration than painting because paintings normally are not detail oriented. It's more of an artistic exactly. expression. Exactly. It's more of an expression than detail oriented. Anything that is expression doesn't have that much details in it. Okay. But, you know, like if you, let's say, if you have a product that you want to use this to make a label, you can easily make a label with it. So, when did you actually start painting? Uh, I my first painting was just uh, maybe the summer maybe June of huh either 98 or 99 okay one of those 98 or 99 yeah you were in school I, i've done I, I i just finished i graduated from my graphic design class yeah it was 98 90 that's when i yeah and then i decided oh, let me just try painting and i just got a canvas wow. and then and i think no this is not i started with black and white uh -huh. I would take a magazine and then uh, and, and find an image that is black and white and then w I will find an image that is colored and produce it in black and white. I see. And then as time goes on, I start like I got comfortable with that and then I start finding images colored a uh, black and white and pr bringing them into colored Whoa. so so you are already out of college. I was already out of college. How so, old were you approximately you think? 24? Yeah, between 20 and 24, somewhere in between. Okay. So yeah. in the early 20s, you yes. picked up painting. Yes. And then the funny part wow. of it was, when I graduated uh, from college, I have a certificate of graphic design and then textile design. But, you know, I, going back to having a poor background, I couldn't, my goal was to get into fashion design, so I'd never have the opportunity to because the resources were not there. And then uh, I never have the opportunity to study graphic design too. And because of my drive to, you know, have education, after my first two semesters, 
I was I, I was given uh, the free I was given like kind of scholarship to do the rest of my college education for free. So after graduation, I was I start I decided to paint, and as I'm painting, I'm also teaching the the second and the third year class at the same college. Wow. <laughs> So, do you have a favorite painting that you've done? Uh, let's see, favorite painting. Or maybe what what was the painting that was the hardest painting you've ever done? Oh, <laughs> that's the, for me actually. It's like I never have uh, the hardest painting to do because um, I don't feel like. I've done two of the same painting. Like, I'm working on this one, I'm working on that one. The inspiration is totally different, you know. So I would say the hardest painting I've ever done would be the first painting I've ever done for my painting life. Yeah? Yeah, because one. with that one, I was like, I was in a, like, in a dark cloud i have no what to do yeah. and i don't know how it will turn out and then uh, you know it, it that that was where the challenge comes but after that it's almost like i'm able to see whatever i'm going to do i can only make it better at least come out but not really that challenge mm -hmm. the the only time i would say i have hard time with painting is you know, if I'm not at the stage to start painting, I can't do anything. Like somebody can say, uh, draw me a tree, mm. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> do that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm that weird. Okay, can you imagine that we, we went, f I went for um, this past year Christmas uh, party, and every, everybody was given a paper to kind of come out with a Christmas tree. Mine was the most off. <laughs> it was unbelievable. It's like, and then like when this, uh, everybody's like, oh, Sally will get this one. And I'm like, you'll be surprised. It's like, my even didn't even come close. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Okay. How are you? Feel this painting, okay? I can touch it? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, it's got a lot of texture on it. Exactly, so that's the coffee grind. So you put the coffee grinds into the paint? Into the paint. I mix it with the paint. Wow, look at that. Exactly, so. So that's how you get that 3D. Exactly. So it separates yeah. individually. Like, instead of it, I can easily have it like all flat work. Like uh, I was telling you, my works are more like a design. But using this, it's like I'm trying to separate the two different layers of uh, the painting, which also tells you that. I'm putting this composition in front of a curtain. Oh, okay. So that means the co the background, the coffee grain texture kind of gives it a separation uh -huh. from the whole painting. It does. Yeah. And do you do that on all, all, all your paintings or just... No, some of them. There are some that uh, requires that. I will even... Oh, these bikes are getting in the way. I will, I, will, I will show you another painting that has a kind of almost a similar concept. Okay. So. Oh wow, that is super cool. Look at this painting. Wow. This is this is the comb I use. Okay. This is uh, the coffee grain I use, and then this is different texture all together. So this is. Uh, a painting I, I didn't I have not finished it but it's like a, a painting I call a stitch in time a stitch in time yes that is nice so 
So yeah. So if I say I paint with a comb, now you understand. I see. So the comb does <laughs> the that. The comb ten, and then. Uh, Who's your favorite painter of all time? Ah. My favorite painter of all time. Man, I keep forget. Okay, he's he might not be a painter, but this is who drove me into like I think when I was in Ghana is it George Sura this Sur surrealist from France I think that's his name uh, Picasso but like the one person that energized me when it comes to painting is Henry Moore till I saw his real life uh, yeah I like artists like Picasso Gugwin Van Gogh and some of the American um, uh, abstracts. But the first time I went to Washington DC and I went to the museum and I saw one of his piece actually is like unfinished sculpture before he died. That was it for me. So since then it's like, yeah. Like I was so moved. Like I'm, I'm watching the piece, and it's almost like he's sitting right there, chipping the the, the pieces of from the wood because it's not finished. That was the last work he worked on. It's not finished. It's still raw, and you're looking at the sculpture, and it's like you know you, you see, see all, all the chips exactly. Yeah, like they haven't smoothed it uh, out yet. It's it's pure mm -hmm. raw. It's yeah. still nothing. Like you see all the rough edges. Since then, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to stick to one uh, style of painting. Um, I I will just mold whatever I'm doing how I want. So as soon as I saw that sculpture piece. The, the notion of having a style in painting for me just went out of the door and it's like, hey, paint whatever you want to paint at a given time and use whatever uh, uh, materials you want at a certain given time. And that's when all this comes in. So you can see, you go from here and you go from there. Maybe if I have a show of all this painting, Without the signature, somebody would think that, yeah, it's a collection of different artists. <laughs> <laughs> These two brushes happen to be giving me my this is the, the this favorite this strokes. This is what you paint with? This is what I'm painting this whole painting You paint with. that whole yep. thing with this. Can you believe that? And then, it's not that I don't have brushes. I will show you. <laughs> I right. can't believe you paint that. I will show you. I 60 have. by 42 or whatever it was with this. See, not that I don't have brushes. Look at them. Yeah, you got all these brushes. Exactly. You I, have, use these? I have all these brushes. See? Uh -huh. But for some reason, this it, it just gives me the 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 uh, the, the, the strokes that I, I I need on this painting. And that's what I'm going with. So, so yeah, these still look brand new. Exactly. Well, cool. Now we just need to go find a bus to see if we can get back to Sonoma County. That's right. How far do you think the bus station is from here? Uh, probably like ten miles. Ten? No, maybe five. Ah. Probably less than five. I thought it was like a mile. Yeah. <laughs> or less than. Wow, we made it. We survived. <laughs> Weird. We are in the future. Why is a drone flying by? I don't know. Down here. Wait, this is the Santa Rosa Transit Mall. Look, there it is. We're living in the future. Okay, let's go, Coles. Let's go our last few miles. About 10 miles. 10 miles? Yeah. Living trees, living in the street, get caught up in life's freeway. Shooting guns, killing each other. Forgive them, Jack, for they've gone astray. Leaving their mother with their naked fire. What? It's a nightmare. 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 
Nightmare. Yeah, one. Nightmare. 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 When you go to bed at night, you wake up in the morning still hearing the news. One man get shot, this one get hot. Lord, in this culture, I just can't refuse. Spend some time and give some minds to the people that you see passing by. Because today it might be for you, but tomorrow it could be who? It could be for me. 